Big Ball, what's good, what's good? How's everyone doing? Hopefully you guys are all doing well. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, like, share, subscribe. All that good stuff, people. It all helps. All right, what is there to talk about today? Let's start with this one. Jaron Ennis, if I was Virgil Ortiz, my main focus would be getting healthy and not fighting. Yeah, uh, forget about fighting for now. I mean, this is, this is now clearly a serious situation with Virgil Ortiz. He collapsed a few days ago and was rushed to A&E. I mean, it doesn't get more serious than that. So look, hopefully Virgil Ortiz can somehow sort out what's going on. I don't know. I haven't read up on his condition. I don't know if his condition worsens when he puts his body through what he puts it through to go for a fight camp. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but this has happened now two or three times. Obviously nothing as serious as what happened the other day, but this is now two or three fight camps where the fights have been canned a day out, two days out, three days out. And that's difficult for everyone. So yeah, um, I agree with Jaron Ennis. Um, Virgil T should just focus on his health first. And then if it can be sorted, then focus on fighting. Because, I mean, when you read up on the situation, I mean, it was life and death. Life and death. So yeah, health first, 100%. Uh, Dimitri Bivol, I don't want to move up and wait until I finish things at 175. But I don't want to see Bivol move up and wait. I mean, Bivol isn't a big light heavyweight. So yeah, I mean, look, 175 is perfect. All these people that try and um, jump the weight classes to be a two weight or three weight world champion or four or five, sometimes your body is just perfect at a weight class and you don't have to chase the weights. I get it. You, you can sometimes chase the weights when there's a big money fight, a couple of weight classes above, Jamel Canelo as an example. But if there's no big fight out there and there are big fights in your division, big money fights, and there is a big money fight for Dimitri Bivol, stay there, stay there. I think there's a few big funny fights actually for Bivol at 175. So look, let's just see what Bivol does in terms of an opponent. We've heard nothing, still crickets. I know Matram want to um, announce their upcoming schedule um, from, I'm guessing from AJ until the end of the year. Obviously AJ has been announced. There's rumors of the Katie Taylor, Chantel Cameron rematch in November, uh, Josh Warrington. Hopefully, in that schedule is a Bivol fight as well. That's what we want. Uh, George Cambosos grinding hard in top form for Maxi Hughes clash. I like this fight. I like both guys a lot. Um, I've covered, I think, the last three or four Maxi Hughes fights, which have all been on the zone. Um, coming off that really good win against Giovanni Straffon, where everyone thought, everyone thought he was going to lose, uh, where he won the IBO lightweight title. He's had fights against Kid Galahad. Uh, Walsh as well and George Cambosos is coming off those back-to-back -back defeats against Devin Haney no shame in that no shame at all and Cambosos is a very very good lightweight very good lightweight like there's probably only three or four lightweights that I think beat Cambosos like, I think I was thinking about this the other day like I think Cambosos would beat Ryan Garcia that's what, that's what I think and some people might say no but I think he's just technically a much better boxer who we know can dig deep and I feel like um, if he can take Ryan Garcia into deep waters, I think he beats him. Obviously, Ryan Garcia has jumped to 140. I'm just trying to think, you know when you name your, your, your four or five top 135 pounders, people like to put Ryan in there. I think you need to put George in there still. Let's not sleep on George because he got beat by Devon. Let's remember, this is a guy that beat Tiafimo Lopez. I mean, that's such a good win. But yeah, looking forward to that fight. I think it's the 22nd of July. And then the week after that, well, you know what that is. Uh, Marius Bradis withdraws. Oh, okay, from July 21st card. Uh, had to. I mean, I, I spoke about this the other day. His opponent was, and this isn't a dig at his opponent. This is a dig at Bradis for wanting to fight that opponent. Embarrassing. Honestly, embarrassing. So it makes sense. Um, you're, if you're Marius Bradis, I mean, you're one of the top cruiserweights on the planet. Go straight in there. Honestly, you should be going straight in there with one of the top guys. Honestly, if a Coley, and I don't know how much money's in this fight, but if a Coley's not taking um, the Chris Billum Smith rematch, and I'm hearing he's not, then what about a Coley, um, Maris Bradis? I think that's a good fight. Uh, Julio Cesar <clears throat> Martinez, I still want to be undisputed champ. He's almost, well, I don't want to say been forgotten, but when you think of the division, everyone's talking about Sonny versus Bam, Sonny versus Bam. That's number one versus number two. I mean, Julio Cesar Martinez might say that isn't the case. Um, so if I'm him, I just wait for those two to fight each other, fight the winner, and then you're close. Then there's only one more belt out there. So um, still like him. And if I'm also if I'm Sonny, I'm looking at this as a bit of a revenge mission. Remember, this is the guy that put the beating on his brother. So I'm thinking, I want you. 
but Sonny's gone for the big dog in the division. Um, but look, we're going to get some good fights between those three, or maybe even more people in that division as well. Uh, Lerone Richards, ready to make 175 jump if no opportunities come at 168. I've seen Lerone a lot in the last couple of weeks and he's, um, he's desperate for an opportunity. And I, when I say desperate, I don't mean like he's begging, but he feels like I'm an unbeaten 168 pound guy. Like, give me a fight. Give me someone. Um, obviously, he went over to... He had a comeback fight, didn't he? But he went over to Boxer. Um, was it Boxer? I think it was Boxer. I'm not going to check. I think it was Boxer. He now wants to come back to Eddie Hearn and Matram Dazone. I'm not quite sure if there's been a conversation. Um, I know a lot of people will say things like he was a boring fighter. I, I don't know about that. I, I don't know. I think he's a good fighter. I think he's a tricky fighter. Um, I think... His personality is very laid back and sometimes that that sort of shows itself in the ring, but he's good. He's a good fighter. Hearn feels strongly that pay-per-view price of Joshua White rematch is justified. I think the pay-per-view cost is $26.95. I don't know. I think AJ is a pay-per-view fighter, even without the belts. Um, look, before we even get there, we no nobody wants pay-per-views. Nobody. Maybe the fighters. But we as fans don't want it. Um... And it is creeping up over here. I, you know, I remember the days when it was fourteen ninety five. Um, I still think there are pay per views that should be that price. I don't know what Usyk versus Dubois is. We're going to talk about that fight in a minute. But there's some pay per views that maybe don't justify the the high price point. Like in America, which by the way, their pay pay per view prices are ridiculous. They just seem to price it depending upon the fight. Like I remember Charles Martin Luis Ortiz. I think it was like. Thirty nine ninety five, whereas you think of uh, Crawford Spence is eighty four ninety nine. So it's different prices, and maybe we need to think of that over here. As for the price, I mean the price is the price. The price is the price. Um, that doesn't mean I'm saying that that price is fair. It's AJ is a pay per view fighter. I know his last fight wasn't on pay per view, but he's a pay per view fight. He is. He is people, and this is a big fight. I think. Um, Eddie said something like this fight's going to sell out immediately and I think it's close to doing so so um, it was always going to go on pay-per-view quick one on Usyk Dubois obviously uh, announced now it will be on TNT pay-per-view uh, which is going to be very interesting Look, they're going to announce their new lineup of presenters and I do wonder uh, whether or not that means the old school boxing presenters don't present this one I don't know maybe they don't make too many changes straight away but back to this fight I, I was thinking the other day what chance I give Dubois you guys know if you watch the channel I always do like a percentage what percentage chance do I give Daniel Dubois going away from home beating the former undisputed cruiserweight champion Olympic medalist all the all the accolades can Daniel Dubois beat that guy and I give Daniel Dubois when this fight was first announced I gave him a five percent chance five not 55, not five. Um, now I've gone up to 10. It's moved up a little bit. You know, they messed up a little bit here before we talk about the fight. They messed up. Uh, England are playing Ukraine. That game's going to be in Poland. I think it's 10 days later. I know I don't expect the FA to talk to Frank Warren, somehow arrange a date, but you could have had a lot of England fans going out to support Daniel Dubois who would have watched the football. Maybe a day later or a couple of days later would have watched the boxing, would have stayed over. But back to the fight, I mean, you know, there's a part of me and the reason I've given Daniel an extra 5%, there is a part of me that thinks if you're going to get Usyk, this might be your best opportunity. Uh, Usyk is now 36. Let's have a look. Alexander Usyk is... Um, two sacks, peeps. 36. Jeez, he's getting on. Usyk is 36. He's not been active. He's been out of the ring a year. That's not... that. It, by the way, his activity since the World Boxing Super Series is pretty much embarrassing. It's, it's maybe not his fault, but it's embarrassing. So he's 36. He's been out of the ring a year. And he is starting to slow down. He's going to. He's 36. And if Daniel Dubois doesn't try and have a boxing match, a bit like AJ did, and just tries to put it on him, we know he's got the power. That There could be that exuberance of youth thing. He has got a chance. Again, I'm not giving him a great chance, but he's got a chance. If we can just go in there and just try and steamroll him, that's the only that's the only way you're beating him. By the way, a bit like Chisora did. You're not going to beat him if you stand off and try to have a fucking boxing match with the guy. You are going to get absolutely obliterated. If you can go in there, steamroll him, have no fear, 
and try and bash him up. That's the only way. And again, Danny Dubois, I don't think is afraid of. Uh, so I don't think he's afraid of getting a smack. So he's a, he's not afraid of getting into the pocket into Usyk's danger zone. Um, and he's he's a big heavy big heavy handed puncher. So um, look, I expect Usyk to get the job done. I expect him to stop Danny Dubois. But if Danny Dubois can go in and land a couple, who knows? I mean, who knows? I mean, that would be one hell of an upset to do that away from home against the unified heavyweight champion, unbeaten, Daniel Dubois, who's coming off um, a Kevin Lorena performance. And I, you know, the way I said performance there, because it was just, I don't know what it was, switching trainers. You know what? In fact, I take my 10 down to 7.5. I, 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 nah, 7.5%. I give him a 7.5% chance. Um, it's, it's a difficult difficult ask and normally there's a part of me that wants to wave the British flag and support him but I can't because I want to see Usyk Fury so I want to see unfortunately what I'm saying is I want to see Alexander Usyk win I want to see Dubois put up a good performance but I want to see Usyk win because I want to see number one versus number two I still harbour that hope so um, good luck to Daniel Dubois Um, I think if it's if it's at a good time am I anywhere I'm trying to think of where I might be in the world if it's at a good time, I'm pretty sure we can do a live watch on. We haven't done one of those for ages. But yeah, I give Dubois very little hope. You guys might give him more hope than I do. But ultimately, he's in there against a genius. A genius that I think still has a lot to offer. Um, Sean Porter, Crawford has more tools in his toolbox. Spence is more fundamentally sound. Perfect way of summing that up. Crawford has way more tools in his toolbox but Spence is, yeah, Spence is fundamentally sound, tough, solid, does what he does very well. But Crawford, like Crawford might be able to start this fight badly. And I just know he's going to be able to go through the gears, switch it up, go into that tool bag, bring out a tool that maybe Errol Spence, not that Errol Spence hasn't seen, but Crawford will throw different things at him. Whereas I think Spence from round 1 to 12 will do the same thing. Might get stronger, might get a bit slower, might get a bit faster, but it will be the same thing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not taking away from that thing, but it will be the same. Whereas Crawford is going to do different things. I think we guys know his switch hits, his switch hits a lot as well. So, yeah, it's a good observation. I um, I saw a clip of, I think it was Bread, Breadman. I don't know who the other guy was with a snack. Um hat on uh errol sorry sean porter and kelbrook sort of and i need to watch it in four i only watched a clip where they're basically talking about um or having a dig at errol spence's boxing iq um which surprised me a bit but yeah if you haven't seen that go and go and check it out it's pretty good all right anything um anything else um i've just been informed um uh, that there is which is quite exciting is a face-off for um anthony joshua and dillian white and yours truly is going to be hosting the face-off. So um, I'm going to spend the weekend um, studying because that's a big one. It's funny because I actually get very, maybe it doesn't seem like it to you guys watching me, but I'm very nervous doing those things because I appreciate the magnitude of them. And I haven't done a lot. I've only done two. Uh, I, I think I'm lucky. The two I did were actually very good. So pressure's on to make it a hat trick. I uh, remember the one I did for Boatsy Richards, considering Boatsy doesn't talk much, was very good. And Ben Eubank was 10 out of 10. It's gold. So um, hopefully, um, hopefully that's good as well. All right, guys, girls, peace and love. Oh, 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 one second, one second. Lucas Rosansky versus Badu Jack Showdown in play for Saudi Arabia. Um, Rosansky is who Tony Bellew wanted to come back and fight. The Bridgeweight champion that beat up Babich. I'm guessing that means Badu Jack's going up to Bridgeweight and trying to become a three or four weight world champion. Did Badu Jack win a belt at 168 and 175? Let's have a look. I know, I know. Let's have a look. I I don't know. I'm going to say I know, I know, I don't. Okay, so he definitely won at um, Super Middle. Did he win at 175? He did. Oh, no. Wait. He drew with Adonis Stevenson. The Nathan Cleverly one was a regular belt. Um, Marcus Brown was WBA interim and WBC silver. He lost to Jean Pascal. Oh, no, he didn't win at light heavy. It's a shame. So he's bidding to become a free weight world champion. That's a shame. 
unless they count that Nathan Cleverly regular belt, which we ain't counting. We ain't counting at all. Peace and love.